Welcome back to the course in nuclear medicine physics. In the last lecture, we looked at the interaction of charged particles with matter. And now we're gonna look at the interaction of photons with matter. Of course, photons themselves aren't charged and they're massless. So the way that they interact with matter is a little bit different. In addition to the most important interactions like Bremsstrahlung, the photoelectric effect, and Compton scattering, there are other effects too that we'll discuss in this lecture. Of course, all these effects essentially have to do with when a photon is traveling through matter, how does it lose energy and transfer its energy to the surrounding matter? If you enjoy these videos, as always, please be sure to like and subscribe and have fun. last 15 minutes let's talk about interactions of photons with matter now these are particles that are not charged um three okay and for for our previous we're going to be interested in the 10 kV to 10 MeV range there's three effects that dominate the interactions is photoelectric effect quantum effect compare production and i'll talk about a graph Okay, this slide is busy, but I'm just telling you a little bit of the story of photoelectric effect. Again, we talk about Albert Einstein. Uh, he was the one who suggested the quantum nature of light. So he was awarded the Nobel Prize actually for this work for the photoelectric effect. And what happened was that he saw that when light was incident on a material, electrons were released. Then, he found out that the maximum kinetic energy of those electrons that not really doesn't really depend on the intensity of the light, because because people would initially think, well, I would expect that the more light I throw at, at my sample, then those electrons are going to gain more and more energy. But experimentally, what is seen is that the energy of those electrons is the same no matter if you throw a lot of light or less light, but it's just depending on the wavelength or frequency of the incident light. That's what brings us to the photoelectric effect. So you can think is, okay, a photoelectric effect is there's a photon that's coming towards the atom. An electron is knocked out of the atom, but the photon completely disappears. And this is only possible if energy is quantized. So the energy of each photon is given by a formula that looks like this. So the energy of a photon is given by a constant, which is called the Planck constant that I'm showing here, and it depends on the frequency of that photon. It's related to the frequency. Or if you want to type this in as a function of the wavelength, then it's related to that. So someone was asking a moment ago when I was talking about Bremsstrahlung, what was the frequency of that radiation? Then what you can think is the energy that the initial particle is losing that gets converted into Bremsstrahlung will create a photon of that particular frequency. So it can also be the other way around. Now, keep in mind, when we talk about photoelectric effect, the photon is completely absorbed and the atomic electron is ejected out of the atom. Photon completely disappear. This can only occur if the electron is bound to the atom. Otherwise, energy and momentum conservation prohibited. So here, and I have it in red, I hope, I encourage you to prove this to yourself. Go and try to do the math, do the before case and the after case, do the conservation of energy and momentum and prove to yourself that this can only happen if an electron is bound to the atom. If not, that won't be able to happen. Uh, now, what is the energy that that emitting electron will have? Well, it will be, if you have an initial photon with some energy, all the energy is definitely gonna be transferred, but you need to keep in mind that there's some binding energy of that electron to the atom that you need to counteract so, to be able to release the electron. So the energy, the kinetic energy that that electron will have is the initial energy that the photon had minus the binding energy from the shell that it got knocked out from. Photoelectric effect dominates the interaction of photons at low energies. This is the main effect at low energies. How does it depend on the material? It's proportional to Z to the four of that material and is inversely proportional to the cube of the energy of the initial photon. 
Now that atom is left in an excited state. So uh, there's free radicals that can form. There's some chemical reactions that, that can happen. But again, as we've talked many times throughout our lectures, an outer shell electron can fill that empty spot and we can have an emission and we'll have emission of X-rays or we can have emission of, of OJ electrons. Second effect is what is called Compton scattering. So you can think in a way similar, you have an incident photon, but what happens now is that the interaction is gonna occur with a very, very weakly bound electron. So one of the electrons from the very outer shells of the atom. And because in this case, the energy of the photon is much, much higher compared to the energy of that electron, then yeah, we just assume that the interaction occurs between a photon and a free electron. Now, contrary to photoelectric effect, in this case, we don't completely lose the photon. What happens is that that photon transfers some energy to the electron, and then we obtain a new photon that has lost some energy. So because it lost some energy, we have a different frequency and that is now traveling in a, in a slightly different direction. Um, yeah, so this effect is, pro okay, Compton effect is proportional to Z. So the higher Z, the more Compton effect you, you will be obtaining. Now, what is the energy of that scattered photon? So you have a photon traveling to the right in this example. You have an electron that is basically gets some energy from that initial photon, and then you end up having a new photon with a different energy. So the, new, the energy of the new photon, it depends on the energy of the initial photon and the angle at which the second photon comes out from. So we call that the angle theta. So angle theta is the angle between the initial trajectory of the original photon and the trajectory of the second photon. Um, what is the energy then of that, in, of that electron? It will be the energy that the initial photon had, the energy that the final photon had, the difference between the two is what the electron took. So again, try to look at the math of this. There's also conservation of momentum and energy and those kind of things. Try to prove to yourself that this equation actually is right. Again, talk to me if, if you want to see it. I don't have time right now to show it here. Another process of photon interaction is what we call pair production. Now you have a photon that has some energy. It has to be enough to create an electron and a positron pair. So if you want to create an electron and a positron pair, you know that you at least need to have the energy of those two rest masses times c squared. So that initial photon has to have an energy of at least 1.02 MeV. Now, this is a process that only occurs in the vicinity of a nucleus. It cannot happen unless it's in the vicinity of a nucleus. Um, okay, so maybe I'll, I'll ask that question. Try to see why is that you need to have that nucleus, otherwise this won't be able to occur. And something that I want to clarify a lot is because people confuse these. I've seen people that confuse this a lot with, with positron annihilation. Uh, so this process is not exactly in the opposite as, process, as positron annihilation. In positron annihilation, we had a positron and an electron, and we obtained two photons. Here, we start with one photon, and we obtain an electron and a positron. It's two different effects. They're not really one is the reverse of the other. Lastly, there's this thing called Rayleigh scattering. It's not really important in what we do in nuclear medicine. We don't really worry too much about this, but this is just an elastic scattering of, of the photon. Uh, it's an interaction between an initial photon and the atom as a whole. So it's just a deflection of that photon, but without losing any energy. So here, basically your initial photon is the same as your final photon. They didn't lose energy. The frequency at the beginning is the same as the frequency at the end. And it's only important that energies that are much lower than 50 kV, which are energies that we don't really deal too much here in nuclear medicine. So we don't really see too many applications for that. And why are these why are these processes of photons important? 
So you can think you're gonna throw some photons towards a medium, or you can think that you have a source inside that patient and this medium is the patient. So several things can happen to those photons. They can completely be absorbed. It's a photoelectric effect. We're gonna lose completely those photons. They're gonna scatter with or without loss of energy, like Compton or Rayleigh effects, or they just basically have no interactions at all and they can just travel straight. Um, so if you think similar to radioactive decay, if, if you have an initial number of photons that are traveling in a thickness X of a material, we have a constant that we call the linear attenuation coefficient. You solve that differential equation, you can see that the number of photons that you obtain after traveling through the material has to do with the initial number that went straight to that material and that mu and the distance. What are the dimensions of that mu? That's the linear attenuation coefficient. So we need to have this exponent dimensionless. So if mu x is units of length, then the dimensions of mu are one over length. So it can be, for example, one over centimeter, one over micrometer. We typically do it in one over centimeter. So each of the different processes of interactions for photons that occurred has its own probability of happening. And so the total attenuation coefficient mu is basically the sum of those independent attenuation coefficients for each interaction process. So you would sum the probability of interaction for photoelectric plus the probability of interaction by Compton plus the probability of interaction of, of uh, pair production will give you the total mean. Uh, now we typically also remove density effects and we normalize this by the density. So we divide mu by the density and this is what we call the mass attenuation coefficient. Now because we're dividing by the density, I'll leave you as a homework. So look at what are the dimensions of that mass attenuation coefficient and think that now, because this is, has some other dimensions, we're looking at this thickness in other dimensions. So try to see what will be the dimensions of that X. So if we wanna, so let's put this in the context of nuclear medicine. We're injecting a patient and we're gonna end up trying to acquire images using photons. So to detect those photons and those gammas well, typically we're gonna to look to gammas that are typically in the energies between 50 and 600 kV. If we look at lower energy photons, they just have a very, very high chance of interacting inside the body. So if they never make it out of the body, we won't be able to really generate images. As we saw in my example of betas, when we talk about lutetium, the range of beta particles in that particular case was within two millimeters. So again, you can think that all these betas are gonna stop inside the body using betas to create images of patients that are just not gonna be very feasible. So yeah, so that's why we're gonna use photons in those ranges. When we plot the probability of the different interactions in a plot as a function of energy, you get a curve that looks like this. And this is one of the most important curves that we have in, in terms of medical physics in general. So you see, as we start increasing the energies, first photoelectric effect is very important. As you start increasing, then Compton, if Compton scattering starts to dominate and at much higher, higher energies per production dominates. Um, so I'm running out of time, but would anyone understand, can someone maybe type something really quick explaining why is that photoelectric effect has these jumps as you start going in energy? Why is it not just like falling down? So maybe let you think about that. Ask me, I'm, I'm going to quickly ask the question again on, on Tuesday, but that curve is going to look different for different materials. I'm just showing it here for lead, for water, for sodium iodine. Um, well, keep in mind these three materials. We use these a lot in nuclear medicine for detectors to approximate a patient. 
and to block photons and radiation safety. Um, yeah, so you can then think, okay, what is the probability of photon interaction? What is the transmitted number of photons in a situation in which you, for example, have one material followed by another material and followed by another material? Can you, can you think of that as well and try to get to an answer? But then there's these things also that we define. So you can think of what is the number of transmitted, okay, what is the thickness of my material such that if I have start with an initial number of photons, I get half of those photons on the other side. You can solve the equations. This is something that is called the half value layer is okay. What's the layer of material to reduce the number of photons by a factor of two. And then there's another common use term that is the 10th value layer. Similar, but is now what is the thickness of my material such that I can, I, I obtain one tenth of the initial photons on my, on my other, on the other side of the material. I'm gonna ask some, I have some questions here that I encourage you to work on so that you get familiar with, with this attenuation equation and, and when you have different types of materials. So please look at this at home. I'm showing you the solution for, for the first question here, but you can work the one for the, for the other material. And then this is gonna show you also some units that I have. Mm -hmm.